Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. We're getting ready to do some deviled eggs. Some of y'all call them stuffed eggs, some filled eggs. Basically, it's the same thing here. So, Mama boiled some eggs and she put salt in the water. You want to put quite a bit of salt. You don't want it to be, um, it's not just a sprinkle, it's cover each egg a little bit. Don't know how many, don't know how much because don't know how many eggs you're going to be doing. But you want to buy your eggs a week or so ahead of time if you can, if you're going to uh, devil them or stuff them because the peel will come off easier. So this is how I peel them. I crack them. And then I put them back in the water that they were boiled in and let them kind of take in some water. So I'll crack all of them and let them set a second. I've already peeled some. This is just what's left. And I won't make you watch me peel all these. So once they've set just a few seconds like that, then I take them out and I put them on a paper towel or a napkin and I roll them good. Just roll them like that. Now up here at the top, at the what I call the point end, you'll have eggs sort of shaped like this. There is a little air pocket in there usually. So if you can get that pointed part started, then you can get into that air pocket and you'll get below that little skin-like membrane that's in there that sometimes keeps the peel on there and keeps you from being able to peel it nicely. But so always try to start at the pointed end and find that little air pocket. And if you've rolled them, broke that shell up pretty good, most of the time they'll come loose just like this and you don't have any problems with your peeling sticking to your egg. If you're just gonna put them in potato salad or macaroni salad or something like that, if you're gonna cut them up, it's not as big a deal. But if you're gonna do deviled eggs or stuffed eggs for holiday, you want them to be a good, smooth egg without big chunks torn out of it. And that's what you get. So try that, see if that works for you. Um, it usually works for me. Now sometimes if nothing's foolproof and sometimes you will still lose an egg or two. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this up, do that same process over and over there, and then we will get them filled. So y'all hang on just a second. Okay, it's time to cut the eggs. Here's the egg, and I take a, this is just an old-fashioned steak knife, it's serrated. Not that the egg's hard to cut, but it will leave little lines across that white, and I kind of like the way that looks. So when it, I cut it with a serrated knife, cut it straight thin, I cut them long ways. And then I'm popping them in this um, Ziploc bag. Now I stuck it down in a drinking glass just to hold it open. But I don't know if y'all can see them little lines or not, but it gives you a little increase, decrease of, ah, indentions. Little grooves. <laughs> grooves, mom said, little grooves. And uh, this is the last Excuse one. Me. And pop them right in here. And there is 24 halves. Now I've got them here in our Tupperware thing. It's got the little egg trays in it and they won't move and they'll travel well if you have to go somewhere and they'll, it's just wonderful. And they, they're low profile so they don't take up much room. So all I did here, let me tilt you down. All I did here is took a Ziploc bag and just dropped it down in a, a drinking glass so I could keep it open to put those yolks in there. Now, for the secrets, about um, how to stretch this to have enough to go in there. Now you see this leg here, he didn't get any salt evidently because he, he just ain't pretty. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the whole egg in the yolk, in the yolk. Yeah, the whole thing, white and all. And that white will stretch the yolk. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't show, you will never know it's there. It just stretches that yolk. So I'm just gonna put him. You didn't see that, Maggie. <laughs> you dropped something. What you like about an egg yolk over here on the floor? Maggie's always so good to help out around the house. So I'm putting all that in there, yolk, egg, and all, a whole egg. That will give me a little bit more yawa and those two eggs. They didn't make the cut for pretty enough to use as a deviled egg. Sorry, egg, you didn't make the cut. So, this is a 
best way I know to do eggs. I thought about putting them through the power chopper. Y'all who are still shopping for Christmas gifts, we still have the power shop chopper on sale on the Black Friday sale. And the quantity was good last night when we checked. So, uh, it's the original, the original power chopper. So, here you see the whites and the yellows in there. Now, all I'm going to do is just um, take a little bit of this air out so I have room to mash. And uh, all I'm going to do is just mash these up. Just like this because that's the whole point. And when you're using a fork on them or whatever. And these were all just half yolks. Uh, because I was just cutting them in half and dropping them in here. But when you add the whole egg in there. The white, the yellow, and the all, all that. It gives you more filling. So when you find yourself running out at the very last one. And you think, man... I always wondered how come I take the guts, I put them in a bowl or in a bag, and then I put mayonnaise and other ingredients. I still don't quite have enough because I overstuff. It's probably what it is in all of reality. So for you unbelievers out there who said he has just messed up those yolks by putting them in there and putting the egg and all in there, I challenge you at this time. I'm going to smooth this out good and flat. Find that white in there. Where did it go? It's magic. It simply disappears in with the yellow. Nobody will know. And I won't tell them. You don't tell nobody. But this will just be our secret. Just between you and me. Don't tell nobody else how to stretch this yellow apart. Because... Everybody will be using this because everybody needs a little extra filling. But that ain't the only secret I have. I'm just full of them today. Here is another way. See? You can see there's no whites in there. It's all yellow. Um, you can take just a little bit of sour cream. It does not change the flavor of this when you get through it. But say you just need a little bit extra. You don't have any whites. Just put you a spoonful or two of sour cream. So that increases your volume. But what that also does is it makes your whites extra smooth. So if you have trouble with them, not wanting to smooth out after you've done with a fork, say, in a bowl, then you can put this in there and it will all, it'll do the same thing. But I always, you know, when you do them this way, you're pretty well going to have them mashed up and uh, you won't have that problem. But if you do have that problem, it's very easy to smooth them out with just a touch of sour cream. And it does not change the flavor. Because you all know if it did, Mama wouldn't let me put it in there. She said, don't mess them up. In fact, she's already said that once. I don't mess them up. That's right. You through with the sour cream? Yes, ma'am. She don't want me to put no more. She's afraid. <laughs> I just want to put it up. The sour cream does not change the flavor, like I said. And here you can see it's perfectly smooth and yellow and beautiful. And there you go. So, that's just another little hack. Now, I want to put just enough mustard in there for just a zing of flavor. And I'm going to put a teaspoon in there. That's it. I'm going to put a, literally a pinch of salt because you don't want them too salty. And I'm not going to use this pepper because it's coarse ground black pepper. If you got um, the finer ground that, pepper. If that finer, you can sprinkle No, some. this is the same as that, huh? Oh. It, just give me a little bit of that other. So then I'm going to put in there. I don't want a lot of the juice because all the, it, you, it doesn't add a lot of flavor. But it does, add a, it does add a lot of uh, liquid. So I'm going to put one. Keeping teaspoon. I know I'm using a fork, but that's the equivalent of. And then I'm gonna put just a little bit more. What kind of pepper is this? Is this the... That's lemon pepper. So I don't have the that's, fine. We don't have the fine over there. But right here, this in this can, it's powderier and it's fine. I don't want the big black chunks in there. You could use white pepper. And this is just a dash of pepper or pepper to taste, as they say. You can see the difference in this pepper, how coarse it is. I don't want that in my eggs. Because people are saying, what's these black flakes in here? So I'm going to seal that back up. And I'm going to mash it again. Because 
I'm getting ready to put the mayonnaise in. Now here's where a lot of people have a major fail when it comes to deviled eggs. They get them too soupy and they won't hold in there and they're just kind of running everywhere. You all right, Mama? Yes, sir. Thank that you, pepper, <laughs> That pepper transport got Mama down. So I put the sour cream, that made it a little thinner. And I put the pickles, that'll make it a little thinner. And the mustard makes it a little thinner. Y'all see how easy this is, right? If you've not deviled your eggs, uh, I don't know when we'll get this posted, hopefully before y'all make your eggs. But if not, you can use it next time. And that is pretty thin. You don't want it a whole lot thinner. Now y'all, everybody has a, a mayonnaise debate on what you think is the favorite mayonnaise. We like Dukes and we like Hellman's. We're out of Dukes, so we're going to Hellman's. Um, a lot and, of it is what you're right, start out as a kid at eating. Exactly. So I'm going to put one good tablespoon of mayonnaise in here. And that's all. I bet. I bet I don't have to add no more. Because I think that's all it's going to take. I know. Some of y'all are going to say, I put a lot more than that in mine. I do the, trust me, you don't want it too thin and the mayonnaise will thin it down. Um... Folks, that is going to be all I have to have. Because I can tell the way this is mixing up in here that it's going to be good and smooth, but yet it's going to be firm. And you won't have any lumps this way because you're mashing them all out. And uh, I'm going to throw this bag away. No washing. Don't have no nasty fork with egg yolk in it. And uh, if you're not topping... It's a whole lot quicker. <laughs> okay, so there we have it. And there's our little egg yolk. And now I'm just going to pull all of it down. Just like this. Just take my fingers and pull it all down to the bottom of the bag. I want to leave the air in there. Because I want to use that air right now. So I got all the goodie down there in the bottom. Now I'm gonna get me a free corner here. I'm gonna take that air and I'm gonna take these <laughs> wonderful poultry shears because they were handy. These were handy. Now here you wanna make sure you just cut the right amount off. So what I do is I just mash, put the air up in there where I can see the point good. And then I just cut just enough then I'm gonna have a good, not a dime size, but a good size. And then I pull my eggs over here where y'all can see them. Wasn't that nice made to clean off the spot for you? You did good, Mama. You're always the clean one. And then you could, if you wanna get fancy or if you can find yours, you can get a <laughs> cake tip and stick in the bag after you mix it up, pull it right through that hole and you could do the little fancy ones. But, uh, I couldn't find the cake tips. We've saying. never found them. We have them. We find them in between needs. But then we never find them the day we need them. I'm gonna, as I was saying, I'm going to drop a nail in a wall and hang them on that nail. But that's going to be okay because we're going to, they'll be pretty with a little fancy, you know. But we're going to fill these up here. Paprika and stuff. Yeah. You don't want them too runny, folks. You don't want to over run them because if you do, they're going to run everywhere and the gravity will pull them down and you'll have a lot of nasty eggs and people will try to pick them out of the thing and they'll have them on their fingers. And, and you get to lick your fingers. Not good at this dinner table. Unless you're the only one at the table. Then you can do what you want. If I found one at the table, I wouldn't go through that much trouble. Well, how would you do devil eggs if you was only one mama? I would just spoon them in there and go. Not me. I know what you want. I always tell mama, do things for yourself. You don't have to do everything for somebody else. I say, will you think they'll like this Christmas tree this year? Suit yourself first. 
Then they, they like it all right, and if they don't, if you love like, it, they will too. Suit yourself. I'm just going round and around, as you can see here. Not very hard at all. Let me pull you down here where you can see what I'm doing. Now, when you're boiling your eggs, you don't want that yucky green uh, in there. Boil your eggs for about eight minutes and then take them off the bowl and leave them set in the hot water for up to 10. And then once you get to 10, take them out, uh, take them out of that hot water and uh, give them in a quick cold bath. And then start peeling them. And then peel them while they're warm. That's what, the reason I had a couple there that didn't peel too good because I was talking and I didn't get them while they was good and hot. But most of them did good. And they'll eat good and they'll taste good. And that's what we're after. But if you have to, if your eggs are too soupy, you're putting too much stuff. Now I'm gonna have extra stuff, I believe, because I added that extra and I probably didn't need all of it, but I was showing you all how to stretch yours. But when you add those two whole eggs or three or four, you could add up half a dozen whole ones. Ooh, if you wanted did to. Did you add two whole eggs to that batch? I put the whites in all, Mama. Of two eggs, you're going to have plenty of toppings. I will have plenty. I'm going to put plenty on them, and I'm going to have plenty left. And uh, I put a little bit of sour cream in them, too. So that stretched it out a little bit. If you want that smoked paprika, I believe you're going to have to come in here. Yes, ma'am. You do, do you want paprika on them? You just want plain paprika, don't you? Yeah. We'll just put plain on this. Well. We won't put smoked. I love smoked. I don't, which. But Mama don't want Are there a difference in these two? No, ma'am. Those are all paprika. Eureka, paprika. Now, as you can see, I have filled these up. These are full, and I have enough to fill two or three more eggs. And in they go, round and round. Now with this, I could go back and add a little top on them or a little, you know, a little divot. You could go back and just do a little on each one of them to give it a little extra pizzazz. pizzazz. The good thing about this tray, if you're cramped for room on your table, you can take out individual trays at yeah, a time. Yeah, you can just serve that. eight at a time, if that's the problem. problem. So I've had enough to fill them all really full and go back and give them all an extra little daub, as you can see here. Extra little daub. Extra little daub. And then I'll throw this away. We're done. There's no cleanup to this. I'll, I'll put it right here. I'm gonna throw it in the garbage. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. So this is just paprika. This is not smoked. Now, some of the group that will be eating these today may not like paprika. So instead of leaving half of them for them or not covering part, part of them, I just go through and do every other one with paprika like this. So the whole tray looks good but you've not done them all and you don't have one big section without any decoration and it all has a little decoration and mama don't like the olives so mama don't like olives or i would stick olives. olives so I see you like can't olives. really see which ones don't have unless you're picky and you say i don't want paprika that one don't have it so if you don't want it or if you do want it but i've not i didn't like do half of them or something i just done it did half of them but i done them across the whole thing so it still looks Blended and nice, and you have a nice display, but yet everybody get what they want. And what she's talking about is these little inserts here. You can just take them out. These are individual inserts. So if you don't have room for this whole big thing on your 
table. You could take this, sit it on the table in two or three different, well, three different places, and everybody would have eggs near them, and yet you wouldn't take up any room on your Thanksgiving table. So there is another little helpful hint. And this is the Tupperware. Tupperware thing. It was just a house, six feet in the and it was uh, two little trays. This is the Tupperware. What's the name of this, Mama? I can't remember the serve, uh, something store and serve. I don't remember the name of it. We'll look it up if you need to know. And the inserts are sold at different times of the year. They're not always on sale. So when uh, they do come on sale. It's the same pan. As and you did I the side of salad. Saw the salad in, except it didn't have the inserts. With right. It. So there is deviled eggs and how you can stretch them. Now that little trick of using the whole egg, the white now, like I said, if you make more eggs, you need more. You can use three or four in there. Uh, that white just disappears. And the sour cream, you won't taste it. So don't tell them. Don't tell them, hey, that's got sour cream, unless they're allergic to it, of course. But uh, if they can eat a deviled egg, probably they can eat dairy. Usually because it's got mayonnaise in it. It's got some other stuff in it. So anyway, folks, that is deviled eggs uh, here on Thanksgiving morning. And uh, it's going to be time for lunch. And Mama's going to show you the pumpkin bread from the live she done earlier this morning. I've shown you all how to make it. And it's hot. And I'm telling you, it smells wonderful. And I can hear it. It's saying, coffee, coffee. <laughs> now, I don't hear it hollering coffee. It is, Mama. Uh -uh. This is the old-fashioned toothpick test. It's clean. Look at that. No liquid on there. Mama will check it a bunch. Okay. Now, isn't that beautiful? See, she filled it up a little higher, so it did come up enough to you could see it. And um, if you just done it half, it would only come up to it right there. I thought that's magic. I was going to lift it. Isn't that no delicious bottle. looking? It's a little hot to cut, so we will not cut it right now. And you're not going to cut it, no way. You're not going to cut it, no way, she said, because I'm going to give some of this away. And there it is, and there's the other one. That's the double batch pumpkin bread that we made this morning. And boy, does it look good. Now, I'm going to tell y'all a little secret here. If you want to. in there just a second longer. Oh, uh, yeah, that might be a little different. If you want to, and you feel so compelled, I just about dumped y'all. You feel so compelled to do so, you can make up a wonderful, wonderful um, buttercream glaze. Put your little pumpkin pie spice in that. A little bit of cinnamon. Drizzle that over top of this before you cut it. Let it set up good. And then every slice you cut will have a nice little frosted edge on it. Not too much. Not over the top. And it's just delicious. And if you want to make up a little extra, set it there with side of it and let them dip it over their slice piece. Mm -mm -mm. They'll be talking about you for years. They'll be saying, remember that pumpkin bread they brought with that wonderful icing? Give it a try, folks. It's delicious. Mama, you got anything else today? Have you got any more chores for me, have you? No, we're through. We're ready to get at it. Man. Get at it. Get at that eating and enjoying. Mm -hmm. Folks, we hope y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we are so thankful for each of you, and we're so uh, blessed to have you in our lives, and, and we just hope you all uh, get a chance to spend some time with your family. If you know someone who has lost someone this year or uh, is suffering or maybe depression, you know, during the holidays, depression is a real thing. Uh, it's a real thing year-round, but it's really compounded during the holidays. Reach out to them. If you know someone who's alone, reach out to them and say, hey, we're thankful that you're in our life, and we just want to call you, text you, Maybe you sent them a card already. Uh, and just reach out to them and let them feel the love. Share the love with someone. Yeah. And if you know someone that has no one to cook for them or do and they're not well, if you've got extra food, share with somebody else. It doesn't hurt one bit to share a plate or two. And that's always a blessing. You get more blessings out of that than the ones that receives it. And... Uh, just have a happy, happy Thanksgiving and be thankful for everything that God has gave you. Without Him, we wouldn't have anything. That's exactly right, Mama. And I'm thankful for Mama. People always write on here. I, um, I know why you why y'all write it, but you'll say, uh, you know, 
be thankful for your mama. Uh, maybe you've lost your mama, or maybe you don't have that relationship with your mama. And I'm telling you, we got that thankful part covered. I am so thankful for my mama. Take your apron off, Mom. Look how pretty you are. It's the washing machine, darling. Yeah, you've used that apron today. <laughs> but I'm thankful for Mama and thankful for my whole family and thankful for the family we over here. We do kind of match. We here. do. I didn't plan it, but we do kind of. Yours is, You wore a brown gravy shirt, too. <laughs> I was looking out. <laughs> I'm very you thankful for Mama. You know, if I drop in it, he'll hit right in that wide or something. It'll find a spot. <laughs> it'll find a spot. Yeah. I know mine will, too. This may be the last time you ever see this shirt. <laughs> Folks, we are going to go leave y'all alone. We hope it's 1130. It's almost time for some of y'all probably to start eating if you eat it high noon. Um, we eat a little later, and that works out well for us and our family. So we're going to get out from here, and we're going to get at it. And uh, we're going to have a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner and enjoy the company, enjoy the day, and just be thankful. And let that carry right on. Let today be the beginning of your thankfulness. Let today be the beginning of thankfulness all year long. Right. And uh, we'll see y'all back. Um, I don't know when. Probably not tonight. We may do something with leftovers or something tomorrow. I don't know. You got any plans tomorrow, Mama? No. Except no. eat leftovers, I guess. Eat leftovers and we'll eat some turkey. I love a good turkey uh, sandwich with cranberry sauce on it the next day. Yeah. Isn't that great? All right, folks. We'll talk to y'all later. And you all enjoy yourselves and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Goodbye, y'all. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye, Mama. Bye-bye.